A soil mass is composed of small solid particles which we call the soil grains. These soil grains when depositing in a soil mass arranges themselves in a way that some amount of empty space is enclosed between them. We call these spaces voids. These soil particles in a soil mass are burdened by the weight of everything above them, which includes weight of all the soil particles above them, weight of water and weight of any structure if present above. And because of that, these particles experience stress, which we call total stress. But if we put this soil mass in water, then because of buoyancy force, the net total downward force that is acting on the soil particles is reduced. Consequently, the stress on the particles is reduced. This reduced stress is called effective stress. The stress exerted by the water present in the pores is called pore water pressure. We can write expression for effective stress as total stress minus pore water pressure. Effective stress is different at different depths below the ground surface because total stress and pore water pressure changes at different depth. We have already discussed the effect of variation of water table on the effective stress. Link to that video is in the description. We know that stress at any point or plane under the soil can be given as the force on that plane divided by the area of that plane. Force on that plane is the weight of soil above the plane and that is unit weight of soil multiplied by its volume. Volume is area multiplied by the height of the soil mass. This can be simplified to this. So we can directly write this stress under any material as unit weight of the material multiplied by the height of the material above that point. We have learned in the previous video that water molecules travel in upward direction in the soil even against the gravitational forces because of a phenomenon called capillarity or capillary effect. Capillary effect is the ability of a liquid to flow in narrow spaces without the assistance of external forces. This rise in water is called capillary water. We will try to calculate the effective stress in soil at different depth when there is a capillary rise in the soil. So let us consider a soil mass of bulk unit weight gamma and assume the water table lies at some depth h1 below ground surface. Because of the water table, soil becomes completely saturated and unit weight of soil becomes gamma set. The water below the water table is in compression because of the weight of water itself and the pore water pressure is positive that is above atmospheric pressure. Soil above the water table becomes saturated because of capillary rise of water. So unit weight of this soil also becomes gamma set. In case of capillary rise, water above the water table is in tension because it is pulled up by intermolecular forces and the pore water pressure in this region is negative that is below atmospheric pressure. Let us consider the capillary water has risen up to the surface and the soil becomes fully saturated up to the surface. We will try to determine the effective stress at different depths. Let's begin with the surface. The total stress at the surface is zero because no load is present above this plane. No water is present above this plane. But capillary water is present here and it is in tension. So pore water pressure is not zero at the surface. It is unit weight of water gamma w multiplied by height up to which the capillary water has risen that is h1 and it is negative as it is below atmospheric pressure. So effective stress at the surface of the soil is given as a total stress minus pore water pressure. And we can write it as this. 
If capillary water is absent in the soil, then at the surface pore water pressure would be zero and so would be the effective stress. Now analyze the stresses below the ground surface in capillary saturation zone at this plane. The total stress on this plane is because of this saturated soil above gamma set multiplied by the height of the soil above this plane say h1 prime or water pressure at this plane is negative because of capillary water present and is gamma w multiplied by the height of the capillary rise up to this plane say h1 double prime we can also write this height as h1 minus h1 prime so pore water pressure can be written as this we should note that water present above this plane does not cause to increase the pore water pressure at this plane because this water is also capillary water and is in tension it cannot compress the water below so effective stress at this surface can be written as this by solving we can write it as this and this quantity can be written as submerged unit weight of soil now let's analyze the stresses at the plane present at the water table the total stress on this plane because of the saturated soil above gamma set h1 pore water pressure at this plane is zero because water on the water table remains at atmospheric pressure and water is neither in tension nor in compression so effective stress will be equal to the total stress now move a little more down the water table and analyze the stresses at this plane let's say it is h2 depth below water table the total stress on this plane is because of saturated soil above the water table of height h1 gamma set h1 plus stress because of saturated soil below water table of height h2 gamma set h2 pore water pressure at this plane is compressive and is because of this water only that is water below the water table water above water table has no effect under the water table so pore water pressure is positive gamma w h2 hence effective stress at this surface can be written as this and we can write this quantity as submerged unit weight of soil now let us take another case when capillary rise saturates the soil only up to some height above the water table and soil saturation does not reach up to the surface saturated part of the soil has unit weight gamma set and not saturated perhaps wet soil has bulk unit weight gamma let's begin the analysis with the soil surface again the total stress at the surface is zero pore water pressure is also zero as no water is present above the surface and no capillary water rose to the surface so effective stress at the surface is also zero now let's analyze the stresses at this plane up to which the capillary water has saturated the soil the total stress on this plane is because of the soil above this plane bulk unit weight gamma and height of the soil above this plane say h1 prime pore water pressure at this plane is negative gamma w and height of this plane above water table say h1 double prime so effective stress at this surface can be written as this by solving it we can write it as this now let's analyze the stresses on a plane at water table the total stress on this plane is because of this soil gamma h1 prime plus stress because of this saturated soil gamma set h1 double prime pore water pressure at this plane is zero as water is at water table and at atmospheric pressure 
So, effective stress is equal to total stress. Now move below the water table and analyze the stresses at this plane which say at H2 depth. The total stress on this plane is because of this soil gamma H1 prime plus because of this saturated soil above the water table gamma set H1 double prime plus because of this saturated soil below the water table gamma set H2. Pore water pressure at this plane is in compression and is because of water that is below water table gamma WH2. So effective stress at this surface can be written as this. We can also write this quantity as submerged unit weight of soil. If you like elementary engineering videos, you may support it on Patreon. Also, you can buy elementary engineering's handmade diaries. Links are in the description. Read effect of capillary water on effective stress on elementaryengineeringlibrary.com. Link can be found in the description. Thank you.